Hi, I'm Master Trooper Gary Cutler. And I'm Sergeant Blake White, and we are with the Colorado State Patrol. And we are on podcast number two. Most people don't celebrate that, but I think it's really great because I didn't think we'd get past podcast number one. I would expect you to celebrate that. I, I know you're very excited. Wait till we get to number three. Uh, we're going to have like <laughs> streamers and party poppers, all kinds That's of things right. going on. We probably should have saved our uh, next guest here because we said we were going to have uh, some guests that were going to come up here, and I am excited about this one. Uh, it's Tim Allen. He's uh, known as Tim, the Toolman Taylor. But you realize we have no way to actually get Tim Allen on our podcast. I, I thought we talked about this, and you called him? No, I, I don't have Tim Allen's number. I don't have any way to reach him. I, yeah, I got nothing for you. But that was in the planning meeting. No, there was no planning meeting about this, Gary. This is one of your crazy ideas. And I, I don't know why I show up for these things. If there's no reason for him to come, then I'm fine. It's just us. The Colorado State Patrol Podcast. Troopers with a microphone. Now we're in for it. It's roads less traveled with Blake and Gary. I think they're ready. So, like I said, we are back. This is uh, going to be a fun one. And this particular one, uh, we had some people that had requested uh, a few things from us. So we're going to be getting into uh, basically what to do when you get pulled over. So we'll be hitting that uh, in a little bit here. Yeah, we did get a lot of comments, and we appreciate those. Uh, I hope you know that we do read those, and we want to give you the information that you're looking for. And if there's questions that you have, um, we're going to do our best to answer those as we go along here. Yeah, you know, and I was thinking we need to start having, like, we, we don't have coffee here. We don't have donuts. We don't Ooh, have that's anything. That's true. We need to do something with yeah, that. Yeah, we got to ramp up our budget. Yes. Uh, we could afford donuts, couldn't we? Uh, there's always, <laughs> always room in the budget for donuts. Yeah. For those of you that have never known, yes, uh, donuts are a cop's best friend, right? Yeah, yeah there's nothing wrong with that. I, I have uh, probably some might call an addiction to donuts. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just is what it is. I don't think it's just cops that like them. I think everybody loves donuts, but, you know, we get the stereotype, which is fine because I eat them, so so be it. Well, and you have the big donut in your office there. I, I will have to show them what that looks like. I do. I have a few donut things that over the years that I've collected, I've got uh, some artwork. I have a giant metal donut that was uh, made for me. So I have, I have a few things. I don't know how you call a donut artwork, though. But it, it is a donut artwork. It's... <laughs> It, it, you, we'll show it. It's yeah. Some, yeah, you'll have to see a picture of we'll, it. Yeah, we'll show it here. It so art. take a look at this. It's not just a donut, but that yeah. could be art. Too. Right. You know. And the background of my computer. I, I forget about that. The background of my computer, the mm -hmm. screen saver, yeah, is, is also a lot of donuts. Well, you know, I and mean, do you know, I, I did some research and uh, where the donut came from, and they used to call them oily cakes. I think there's a few different stories about where donuts came from. You're saying mine's not right. No, I'm just, I, I think that's one of them. I definitely heard that, but I think there's a, some different variations as far as who really created the donut. Yeah. Well, I know that we've popularized it. I mean, oh, heck yeah. definitely on that, but heck yeah, but yeah, they, I mean, but you think about it back in the day, they were calling them oily cakes. Uh, that doesn't sound appetizing to me. I would eat an oily cake as you well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, it sounds delicious. It sounds like it's fried in oil and, and probably really good for your heart. Yeah. So well, yeah, they said it was fried in fat and yeah. I, can, I can tell you eat a lot of fat so i do you, know. you you have seen me mm -hmm. eat i eat a lot of stuff i just it's don't usually healthy stuff it. and you're usually telling me about mine so i, I think we eat at the same place every day but you eat different the same stuff, not the same know? restaurant but yeah yeah, we go to, yeah. <laughs> eat healthy i do yeah. I, I try not to eat too terrible but i still I, eat a lot of a lot of not so good stuff. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, you eat a lot of good stuff, and I, I'm the one eating the hamburgers and, you know, all That's the true. big heavy he and greasy yeah, stuff. Yeah, you have an obsession with hamburgers. You know, so. I'm in that older generation when we really didn't care about health things, you know, so that's that's why you guys are all like, I need grief, you know, green leafy things. and I like green leafy things. You know, I'll eat that, yeah. yeah. yeah a so nice salad with, but, but not like a plain salad. You know, you got to have stuff with it, the fixings. Yeah. Uh, cottage cheese. Oh. I don't. I wouldn't put cottage cheese in a really? salad. That's what the healthy ones do, I think, isn't it? Or is that I don't know. Thing? I, I, think I don't get. Salads. I would love to hear what people think about, uh, about our healthy. You know, health choices. <laughs> and personally, if you eat a salad, what you would put yeah. in it? Because I, I think there's a lot of options. But, yeah, you know. I'll put a lot of hamburger on it and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, it's it's a good way to do it. Just subtract the greens and lots of beef uh -huh. and a bun, and that's your salad. With cheese. Yep, that's a that's Gary's salad. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> Yes. So we'll have so, to get some donuts and coffee. I, I, I agree. Yeah. I think that'd be got to have something. That'll I, keep I, me energized throughout the podcast. I, I, re, I watch these other ones, and they, they have things, you know, so we should be able to drink something there. Yeah. I got plenty of coffee mugs. I'm down. Yeah. 
Well, so going back to uh, last time, I can't believe it's been a month already, but uh, here we are with it. And uh, we are, we are very happy with uh, the response we got, the viewership, um, the comments and suggestions that you guys had. And so we're gonna start implementing some of those. And like I said a little bit earlier, um, in fact, uh, I, he wasn't the only one, but Gregory uh, wrote mm -hmm. us and he yep. said that he was wondering about traffic stops, you know, and how, how they should go about on those. And so, you know, not everyone is exactly the same, but uh, there's a, a guideline kind of, of, of how they should go. And I think we should do that. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, I mean, especially if you haven't been pulled over before, or if this is a new situation, people are just unsure what to do. And obviously your adrenaline's going, we know it's a stressful time. I mean, nobody wants to get pulled over, uh, but we just kind of want to walk you through it and, and give some tips that we have, tell you um, kind of what to expect so that if you do happen to get stopped, which we hope you don't, um, but if you do happen <laughs> to get stopped, uh, what to do. Yep, and uh, I I am going to do it. I don't care what you say. I've got my my uh, demonstration there, so we will Im import that somewhere in here at some point. Yeah, I think we have to import it because you know what we could do is we could actually create computer graphics pretty easily. Yeah. How good are your computer um, but I think graphics it's, skills? I think it's better than my probably graphic. better than your other graphics. So I think that's going to uh, take more work, but we'll figure it out. We'll we'll make it work. We'll plug it in here. Yeah, I think it's going to work. So yeah, we'll every time we have something we'll we'll do a little demonstration there. It's uh, Gary's, Gary's simplistic <laughs> Gary simplistic driving tips is what I decided to call it. So oh, Okay, all right. And uh, for us older people, we're used to seeing that. You know, they used to do stop motion is how we had to do everything. Yeah, we could do so, stop motion. Yeah. That would just take you a while, but yeah. you can do stop It'd motion. Take me 2 months to get <laughs> it done, but we'll have it. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so let's uh, let's start rolling into kind of the traffic stops. So you want to start on the first one? Yeah. So the the biggest thing, uh, most of our cars, and as you probably already noticed, um, Gary and I are wearing different uniforms today, and the reason for that is we are out doing traffic in both of these uniforms. We work in both of these uniforms. Uh, what Gary's wearing is our primary uniform, um, but what I'm wearing is an alternate uniform that is sometimes worn. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole reason I wore this today. Yeah. Uh, and it is a little more comfortable, I will say that. Yeah, he didn't give me the option to do nope. that. He said, no, I'll come in the pajamas and I'll yeah, I didn't these, even tell so, him, I just know. showed up. And yeah. he's like, oh, he was a little jealous. So these are really nice uniforms. But anyway, yeah. um, these are a couple uniforms that we uh, utilize, but um, we'll also talk about our cars and what to expect with those because I know we do use some unmarked vehicles. We don't use mm -hmm. undercover vehicles to stop cars, um, but they are unmarked. So they don't have all the you know, decals and everything all over them. Yeah. Um, so with that, um, I, Gary and I both drive marked patrol cars. So we have you know state patrol all over the side of it. It's got Mine's got a light bar on the top. His doesn't, but it's got lights all over the place. You know it's a trooper. Um, that's our primary means of stopping vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, then we've also got some unmarks that mm -hmm. I, if you want to explain, you know, like the chargers that we've got that are unmarked and kind of what those look like. Yeah. So you, just your charger, which uh, they'll come in all different colors and uh, they have inside lights. So when I say that, what I mean is that uh, they're inside the car and when they light those up, you'll see them coming through the windows and they prim primarily have them through every window. So it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a 360 on it. And so it's, it's got a pretty good light package. They're also in the grill and the headlights will go on and off uh, with yep. that as well. So it's it's very easy to see that that is truly a a police vehicle. We also have, we don't just do the, the cars, but we have pickup trucks. Um, we also have, um, like we've gotten the, the really big ones now. So we've got some that are the yep. F-350s, uh, the F-150s, you know, and so we have those. Uh, yeah, and yeah. those are primarily marked. We've got, you know, hazardous material troopers. We've got um, some motor carrier troopers, and they utilize some different types of vehicles. But those are typically marked in those vehicles. Mm -hmm. The unmarked vehicles, you're, you're probably going to see us in a charger. And it's, yes, it's unmarked. Um, it is a different tool that we use. And it's still pretty clearly a police car, it I is. would say. I mean, yeah. there's antennas all over. There's lights all over it. If you see some wonky looking car with you know one little red and blue <laughs> flashing light i'd be a little concerned about that myself if yeah, i saw that yeah definitely and then we're also going over to the suv package yes um, the so durango you're gonna yep. start seeing those pretty soon too and and those are marked and we we may have some unmarked that will eventually have on that mm -hmm. but the the ones we're putting out right now are fully marked yeah yeah so we'll see those gary's going to be getting a durango so maybe at some point here we can uh show that a little bit and show what it looks like so that you all can see it uh mm -hmm. try and feature our cars a little bit um, but if you are concerned, if you don't know if it's a police officer or not, and you're getting pulled over, you're uncomfortable, especially if it's an unmarked vehicle. I mean, if it's a marked vehicle, the chances of it being a real police officer are 99.9%. .9%. Yes, there are very rare cases that some crazy person decided to try and copy a patrol car. 
Uh, but if it's a marked car, it's going to be a cop. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's unmarked and you're unsure, though, you can call 911 and you can say, hey, I'm, I'm getting pulled over. This is the area I'm at. I'm a little uncomfortable. Um, at least acknowledge that you're getting pulled over, I think, is the yeah. key. Because I, I drove uh, unmarked cars for years. And sometimes I'm like, well, maybe they just start trying to run from me. And, you know, I, I understand the discomfort. And we're very understanding when we drive those cars. And, and that's one of the things. Usually, uh, you know, hit your hazards so that we know that you, you know we're behind there. Don't speed up. Keep your speed. And uh, you could slow down a little bit, but, you know, mm-hmm. that we, way we know you're not trying to run from yeah, us. Yeah, acknowledge that you, you see us and that you're not mm-hmm. trying to get away. But, again, if you're concerned, call 911. That's the easiest thing because there may be various agencies um, they can connect to, you know, whether it's the Sheriff's Department, Police Department, us, um, rather than just trying to call one or the other. This is the best thing, the quickest thing is call 911. Mm-hmm. Uh, g- always pull over, and, you know, if, you, if you're getting pulled over by a marked car, again, if it's nighttime, Stop in a safe spot. You know, go mm-hmm. to a populated area so it's not just you out in the middle of nowhere. If you're really concerned about it, then, um, like I said, call it in. Find a safe place to stop. Because mm-hmm. we care about your, your safety on that, too. Yeah. We know you may be uncomfortable. Well, and we actually had a situation. This happened about five, six years ago that uh, I was a part of. We had somebody call in and said that they were uh, being basically followed by a pickup truck. And they weren't sure what they had lights on it, but they were completely unsure what was going mm-hmm. on. And so we started to, to move uh, people into that place to make sure that we could be there. When all of a sudden we get a call from the person that was in the pickup, which happened to be a wildlife officer, mm-hmm. yep. and he's calling saying he didn't have, he had somebody that wasn't pulling over. Yep. And so that helped it out. We were able to tie everything together and we said, no, that is the person that is trying to pull you over. It's a legitimate it's a law enforcement officer, yep. but we're still going to send a trooper over there just to make sure everybody, you know, is good. And, and they'll be in uniform. Again, if they're going to be in an unmarked car, they're most likely going to be in a full uniform just like we're wearing. There are some different, again, alternate uniforms that they may be in, like a polo type shirt. Um, and that's, again, where it kind of, if it creates that uncertainty, you can ask for an ID after mm-hmm. you've, if you've already stopped and say, hey, I just, you know, want to verify it and be respectful about it. But, you know, just say, hey, I, I just want to know who you are. Yeah. Um, they'll present their ID, their badge, their information to, to verify everything. There's there's nothing that we're, they should be hiding on that, you know, like right. somebody trying to impersonate going, oh, I'm not going to show you anything. Yeah. We're, we're not going to do that. Yeah, and they shouldn't get, be getting mad at you for that. They exactly. should be like, okay, you're being safe, you know. Uh, if you say, I want to make a phone call to 911 real quick and double check this, you know, that's if they start getting very agitated and trying to say, no, I need it now, yep. then yep. You, you might have that problem. Yep. So so uh, now we're beyond the part of getting, seeing, recognizing the yeah. vehicle, possibly <laughs> doing that. Um, obviously acknowledge that you are getting stopped. And when you pull over, you do not need to slam on the brakes. I can't tell mm-hmm. you how many times that happened. Just yesterday, I tried to pull somebody over there in the left lane of 6th Avenue and started signaling to stop in the left lane of 6th Avenue with no shoulder. Um, Luckily, they took their time and they moved to the right, but don't slam on your brakes and pull to the right. Mm -hmm. I think that is the biggest thing that we always talk about, too, because I can't tell you how many times we've had vehicles just stop in the middle of the highway, Mm -hmm. and it is incredibly dangerous for um, you and us in that situation. See, that's why we're going to have Gary's simplistic... Uh, we'll see. You know, demonstration there because that's that's going to be good. But yeah, because then the next question is, okay, I've got multiple lanes, three, four lanes. How do I get over there? Yeah, and it, and think of it just like when we turn on our lights, you're basically going back over. You're conducting a reverse merge. You're going to slowly move to the right side, um, but you need to move around traffic because some of the cars aren't going to pay attention. Some of the drivers aren't going to see us. They're not going to see you. Uh, they may be focused on us and not really uh, figuring out that you're getting pulled over. So be careful, signal, move over cautiously. We're gonna try and assist you usually moving over um, so that you can get to the shoulder safely. Mm -hmm. And that's one of those, uh, that's kind of a pet peeve of mine too. When we have those red lights on, or red and blues on there, if you're behind that, you're not supposed to be passing at that point. And so that's supposed to, so we can get somebody over to the shoulder. And nobody knows exactly what it is we're doing at that point, so they need to, to do have, caution with that yeah, exactly you know? give some space yes. and, and it helps keep everybody safe it's it's gonna slow you down for just a second and then once you get past you know speed back up and, and get back with traffic mm-hmm. um so now we're over on the shoulder right we're we're hopefully in a safe <laughs> spot you have decided to stop in a safe spot we're to that point that uh don't park right against a barrier against a guardrail um you know something that's gonna pin us or you in a really bad position because our Mm -hmm. cars as we saw in our last podcast sometimes get hit Mm -hmm. and if there is no room 
either for you or us, that can end in a, a tragedy. So try and give some space too. Yeah, because we do want to do those passenger side approaches and we don't want somebody to get hit in there. So usually, like we said before, is we will want to pull you over in some place that we feel safe also, not just for us, right. but for you. So um, it's a little tougher sometimes when if you've got two or three lanes, but if it's just a regular road or you have two lanes there, it's pretty easy to get over. We have an idea that it's going to be an open area for you and it's going to be very visible for everybody. Yep. Okay. So, so far we have been pulled <laughs> over. <laughs> we are on the shoulder mm -hmm. in a safe location or worst case, if you're near an exit ramp pulled off of the highway into mm -hmm. a spot there, again, yeah. acknowledging that you are mm -hmm. getting pulled over with your hazard lights up thing. Yeah. We don't mind you going off the highway that sometimes that's a lot safer for us also. Yep. So, so now we're in a safe location. Now the next thing is, don't make any crazy movements. That's right. um, I think we get that a lot of times where, again, I, I go back to, you know, we tell these stories, but just yesterday, I all of a sudden I see an arm reach up out the window and he's reaching out of the roof of his car. I'm going, what is he doing? And he's trying to get his wallet out, but you see the truck rocking, you see all this going on where it's like, just, we'll mm -hmm. be up there in a minute yeah. and, and we'll talk you through, but we don't know who you are. We don't know if it's, uh, you know, we're stopping Gary Cutler out there. We don't know if we're yep. stopping the Unabomber. Um, so as you do this, just again, it's it's a thing for all of our safety. Just kind of be conscious of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Don't make don't make crazy movements, moving around the car, reaching for things. Because again, we don't know who you are. We don't know yeah. what's going on. And we we expect normal movement. People mm -hmm. are usually trying to get their their driver's license, the registration, insurance. So there's normal stuff that we expect. But when you see something abnormal. That's when we really go to a heightened level, you know, and uh, I did. I, I had one that just it scared me to death one time. Yeah. It was years ago, but the car door opened and out goes a gun just sliding down onto the thing. And I was like, OK, what's what's happening here? And it turned out that it was somebody that was worried about having the gun. And so they had been told that you throw it out. And I was like, no, 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 because that just scares everybody. So that was something that was way abnormal, and it, it went up high abnormal, level yeah. of tension at that point. Yeah, because, because you don't know what's going on. Also, there's a gun flying yeah. out of the car. You're going, are, what? The are there heck more is coming going out? On? You know, what is the situation? So yep. that scares us, and that puts us into a heightened level. And so everything, comes, so everything, keep it normal, keep yeah. it calm. Yeah, and a lot of people, like Gary's saying, with the you know with the weapons, um, it is Colorado, and a lot of people lawfully carry weapons in the vehicle. What we ask is that you tell us. Um, mm -hmm. I, I always say that and I get, we get a lot of questions on that too. What should mm -hmm. I do if I get stopped with a, and I'm car carrying concealed or I, you know, I have a weapon in the vehicle. Just tell us, tell us where it's at before you're reaching around. Um, you know, what I tell people is I would rather know up front than all of a sudden you're reaching over and I see the butt of a gun. Like I, I just, again, it's mm -hmm. understanding that we're both meeting each other, you know, probably for the first <laughs> time we're figuring things out. Um, but just be, be polite about it and, and make those conscious movements and all that and that's going to help it go a lot smoother as well yeah you know so and i, I think that's the the case on it you know because uh it's usually it's for a traffic violation that we've pulled you over so it's you know you didn't use your blinker you were speeding a right. little bit or yeah. something like that so we know that you know it's it's something either you weren't paying attention to at the time or you know you were in a hurry or something so we just want to correct it and so that's why we're pulling you over and right we want it to keep everything smooth yep exactly and um the next thing so at troopers are probably gonna they're gonna go through the process they'll tell you why they stopped you tell you who they are um all that and then we're gonna ask for your documents what are the documents you have to have oh driver's license yes registration yes insurance okay those are the three things that we always <laughs> ask for and yes you do have to have them um uh, we accept electronic insurance mm -hmm. so that basically means that you can have it on your phone um now when i say that the way to verify it for us is use the app, use the website, something like that that actually shows it as opposed to a, a just a general picture that could be manipulated. Mm -hmm. So that's something that you want to make sure if you have the app or you have it ready to go. Um, sometimes it takes a few minutes to log in. We've got through that or forgot password uh, mm -hmm. that people are working through it on that. Um, the registration, you have to have that little slip in your car. And yes, sometimes we can pull it up on our computer. There are days our computer doesn't work, system doesn't work and all that. You're still required to keep that in your car. Mm -hmm. Driver's license. This one's an interesting one. Now. Yes. So keep your physical driver's license and with you, but we are working on a change with that, with the digital ID. I don't know if you, ha I have it on my phone. I don't know if you have it. Of course I don't have it on my phone. <laughs> I just asked a really <laughs> stupid question to Gary. If he had new technology or new yes. app. No. Yeah. I, I forgot. Sorry, Gary. That was a huge mistake of mine, assuming that yeah. you knew that. So I have it. I have the digital ID on my phone. 
I think it's really cool because you can, um, if you're going to, whether it's a bar or something, or if there's, you don't want to have certain information showing to everybody on there, you can actually deselect some of it mm -hmm. um, so that you have the you know date of birth and stuff that they need, but you don't have to give all the information. Mm -hmm. Now for us, um, we're working on a policy and going through the process. It takes a lot for the technology. Um, but we're going to hopefully be accepting those here in the next couple months where you can present the digital ID. We still need you to have the physical one, um, but we should be able to keep it on your phone. So I would say if you can get that, and we'll put a link down below where you can download the uh, digital ID app. I think it's a really cool feature, and mm -hmm. they're, they're, they keep adding stuff to it, different and there, features. But there will be times like we have to take that information back with us, you know, so that's where you run into problems. Yeah, there, so. and that's and that's where, you know, with connectivity issues mm -hmm. and everything, hopefully with this digital ID, you know, the, the it's going to be interesting. There'll be kind of a QR code and scan that it'll come across, and we'll work on that. Uh, we're still working through that, so we'll see how that all works out. <laughs> but again, yes, we do take those documents back, and uh, whether you're getting a warning, ticket, anything, we take those documents with us. Um, even during COVID, it kind of changed a little bit. I'd say we're going back mm -hmm. to more of getting documents and all that, being careful mm -hmm. with gloves and sanitizing everything, um, being very conscious of that. I usually, uh, you'll get your license back cleaner than you gave it to me because I spritz it with some <laughs> good alcohol as they're you know, sitting in the car so it's clean. Um, but yeah, we take those documents back. It's going to take, take us a few minutes and then uh, we'll be back up hopefully. It's not too bad for you if you did, yeah. <laughs> if you did get pulled over. Well, but. you know, and the, that's uh, going to help me some because I don't know how many times I've dropped somebody's driver's license down in between my oh, seat or down into a, you know, I, I'm sorry. If I end up dropping something in there to where I have to get tools out, you're, you're going to get off of that ticket. You're not going to have to. <laughs> so I have done that as well. I think every trooper has done it. Every uh -huh. uh, officer has probably done it where you take it back. And we have so much gear and lights and all that stuff in the car that if you drop that, sometimes it just wedges itself in the most awkward position. I've had you to go into the radio console, yeah. and yep. that's when you have the and tools out take there it apart. and everything. Yep. Yeah, yeah. There used to be little gaps there that was terrible, so that mm -hmm. happened all the time. Um, I've also had to mail somebody their driver's license, drop it by because it got so jammed. I'm not going to sit out there for 30 minutes mm -hmm. taking apart the car. Um, if they need to get going. So yeah. yes, that doesn't, hopefully that doesn't happen to you. That is an <laughs> odd situation, but it has happened to us. Yes. Some if you've been on for any like time, that. That, that's one of those that you just go, okay, well, here I go again. So Yeah. So I think that's, I think that's probably the main stuff mm -hmm. for traffic stops. Again, the stuff that's going to benefit you the most is just be cooperative, be polite. Even if you disagree with it, the being on the side of the road is not the time to argue. If you disagree mm -hmm. with a citation and you don't believe um, that you're guilty of it, then you have a court date, and that's what that's for. We don't want to stand out on the side of the road and argue. If the officer has decided they're going to issue a ticket, they're going to issue a ticket. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we stand pretty firm in, in our decision even prior to going up as far as if we're going to give a warning or ticket, and uh, that's not going to change with you getting upset and arguing. And So just I would say you know, be respectful about it. We, we have a job to do, and, again, we know it's not fun. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've had a lot of people that, you know, they start off really upset and then they come down and they're like, Hey, you know, I, I apologize. It's, I understand your job. And we understand that too, but, mm -hmm. um, we just, again, we're, we're trying to work through it the best we can with you. And yeah. I think that your attitude is always beneficial as far as it, it is, you know, and that is one of those things we, I, I like to talk about too, is that when we're pulling a vehicle over that, this is state patrol mentality here, right. but yep. Um, is that when we get out of that car, we already know if we're going to write the ticket or yep. if we're not. So yeah, it's, you know, it's not one of those where you come up and go, well, can we talk about it or anything like that? It's like, no, this is what I saw. This is what I felt that it was necessary for a ticket or necessary mm -hmm. for a, a warning on that. And that does help alleviate any of that. But, uh, you know, and it's, it is funny when you write a ticket and somebody actually wants to shake your hand, um, because yesterday, you, everything, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they tried to shake go. my head, and then, of course, with COVID, yeah, back <laughs> we're off. not shaking hands. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and and typically it's nothing. It's no offense, but if you try and shake our hands, mm -hmm. we're, we're probably going to say no. Yeah, um, it's just a safety issue. It's, for it's us. a safety issue. We don't we don't shake hands, and and that can become pretty dangerous. Um, so we appreciate the gesture, but mm -hmm. if we politely turn you down and say sorry, I can't do it. I uh, hope you understand that it's nothing personal, especially yeah. with COVID right now. That yeah. that makes it even easier. But <laughs> yeah, we just go COVID. Give an elbow like, okay. bump or something like that. That's right. You know. Yeah. So yeah, you know, you, you feel like you're you're, you know, because if it, we also don't want you going off upset. I mean, it's bad enough that you yeah. have a, a a ticket, but to be upset because of you know something in the interaction or something like that, we want to keep that very very nice, very polite, 
you know, and tried to make sure that um, you understand that we're doing our job yep. and that we have to do these rules. And hopefully, you know, everything works out. So, Gary, I'm going to transition a little bit because I think we fit most of the traffic stop. Yes. And uh, I'm just thinking about the comments and thinking if there's anything else that we didn't hit on. Um, I just want to let you know there were a few people that thought longboard patrol would be pretty oh, awesome. Oh, jeez. Um, I'm still working <laughs> on the logistics of it, um, how to make it happen. You know, I got my guardian angel. Yep. yep. See that? Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go with that. I'm thinking I'm thinking going to get two, though. Yes. I, if I could get a mini siren or something, we'll work on that. But uh, be super I think it's hero white. Yeah, I think it's going to happen. I think we need to make longboard patrol happen. It's well, so we appreciate the comments. I appreciate the support, and uh, you know, letting yeah. Gary know that it is a terrific idea. Well, and I, I think that he's going to need them on both of these because this yep. is if if you watch the first one, you'll understand this. If you haven't watched it, then come and watch this because the longboard division of the state patrol is not going to happen because what not. what happened this weekend was you there wrecked. Was, there's a chance that uh, a I crashed, chance, yes. and that's. That happens, and you know, I wasn't being too wise, I'll be honest. I didn't have uh, some pads on, which I normally do, because it is fast. Yeah, um, let's, <laughs> yeah so there we go. that's See? one bandage. Um, He's I don't got know the if other one over here. elbow over here, but um, yeah, I got, a little, I got a little banged up, but that, that happens. I, I predicted it, though. You yeah, know? and after the bicycle fiasco, I, I didn't see that you had a chance. Yeah, in this physics one. won on this one. Yes. Um, I was a little bummed. I had forgotten my mask. And I was going to stop, make it a quick turn. And then physics was like, nope, uh, no, you're not going to make that turn. <laughs> and uh, longboard kept going, and I ended up taking a pretty good spill. So, yeah, mm -hmm. so that yeah. happens. But uh -huh. that, doesn't mean, that doesn't mean the patrol, the longboard patrol can't happen. That just means it's a learning process. That, that you need a lot more training. But the, how <laughs> close did my prediction that the next one was going to be in the hospital for our show? I was in the hospital. Hmm? I treated close. my own wounds. You were close, though. I yeah. have some. I think I have some rocks embedded the, the in my hands. The fact that though, this has been on it. for like a week now, uh, I think that probably yeah. should have gone to the hospital. So, I figure eventually things stop bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the the elbow was finally healed up. I'm pretty thrilled yeah. about that. Uh, it's he that's... comes hobbling in here on crutches and bandages. And, oh, and uh, I bruised my like, hip. Yeah. So yeah. you know these these gun belts that we have the holster was just digging right into the bruise where I hit the pavement. So that was, <laughs> that was fun. That's yeah. when I really figured out I had a bruise. So the fact that I wasn't on a, a bicycle or a longboard or a skateboard or a Segway, I came into the office well, you could do a Segway. just very, very easily. I don't know if I could. I, yeah. My balance there is just, uh, I know some of the malls around here. I could go out there and test it or something and, like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I maybe. think we could throw you out a Segway throw me on it or yeah. put it, on it, doesn't it? <laughs> it would probably throw you off okay he had a little drone in the office one day and he said you want to play with that and i said okay so <laughs> I, I did that the very first thing it went up and it went straight into a wall and back behind the desk and i spent yeah. the next half hour trying to dig yeah. that out do you think got what a 20 would foot I, pole to get yeah. that from behind the how do you cubicle? think a segue would work with me just right into the wall that's so. probably true <laughs> it's probably best and, and i forgot i forgot to bring your phones i got you three oh, yes. cell phones uh, no 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 i, I think those, those were what iphone 2 yeah, something like that. I I tried. I know he doesn't short. want to upgrade, so I tried to get him something newer uh, no, it's, <laughs> than his current I'll get one. A, but. An appointment there, you know. But but yeah, I was trying to figure out, you know, also with with our show here, you know, who's watching, yeah. why they're watching, and yeah. things like that. And uh, I ran across a thing the other day that said uh, sixty seven percent of uh, people that are actually watch this are uh, they drink juice. Now, what kind of statistic is that? Well, I think a lot of people drink juice. Well, I know. But I don't why know would why you, they would relate that or why would they I mean, measure, I was going, they would measure I, that. I want to know. Do you drink juice? So I have orange juice, you know. So, so you drink juice. You watch this and you're a juice drinker. I don't watch this. I I'm don't. It. I don't drink juice. I drink you know, water. So you're part of the. So I'm the other person. 23% that so we'd, didn't. So. Yeah. So we'd have to get another person or two in here to it's say what how many people drink juice. What kind of juice would be the thing then? But I just. I, yeah, out of all the things that I would want to know odd. about somebody, it's like that that was not the Do we list have any there. juice drinkers that are listening? I'd love to. <laughs> maybe we could set up a poll and know how many of you drink juice oh, versus don't yes. drink juice. I'd say the yeah. vast majority probably, I would guess they drink juice. Yeah. I'm well, a coffee, I'll drink coffee and water, occasional energy drink. Um, that's about it. Yeah. I don't drink well, anything else. There was also a, a baby food households. You know, so. What? 
That's like, how they put it. So I actually got the numbers. It was 67% Are these adults baby eating baby food or are these like... I don't know. I've tried that when food. I've had like oh, surgery on my mouth and nope. that, I thought that would taste good and it is awful. We are really, <laughs> really bad to our... Baby food tastes awful? Did you know that pureed, gross things all blended together tasted awful? I'm shocked. Well, certain things can be taste good. <laughs> I, I could... How about relish? That's... It, it's the same. When no, you I do don't that, eat relish. You didn't... I don't See, this goes back to the health food thing there. The pickles. Think, yeah, you the don't need tomatoes thing. either, do you? No, I'm allergic to tomatoes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I, that's why I don't okay. eat those. I appreciate your care. Oh, okay. <laughs> All righty. Well, we well, got that. We're, we, um, we're going to take a real quick look uh, and do a couple yep. things on the uh, the Gary graphics. I don't know how else to put it there, but uh, we'll put them in here. We'll and, see. Uh, there might, we'll see. There may or may not be Gary graphics. Okay, so here we are with Gary's simplistic graphics. And they cannot get any more simplistic than this. So uh, my marker, my whiteboard, and my matchbox. So anyways, uh, hopefully Blake can handle this. And I hope you enjoy this. So this is a, a three-lane interstate here. We would have a median here with traffic going the other direction. And we also have an off-ramp over here. We have our traffic here. Uh, something I wanted to show you that I'm very uh, happy and proud of is this is a uh, state, patro state patrol uh, replica one of our older models and I was able to get a uh, toy version of that and I thought that was really cool all right so you're going down the interstate you're in the left lane and for some reason you have law enforcement behind you and they've activated their lights so what do you do you're this white pickup here uh, a lot of times we will have some people that move right over here into that left shoulder and a lot of times with that shoulder one it's not wide enough to handle a car and so that'll push you partially into the lane of traffic, which is really dangerous because if you have other cars that are coming through here, uh, they could actually sideswipe or come sliding in and hit in behind us. And so that's something we really don't want to have happen. So what we want to do on something like that, instead of having you utilize that left lane, we want you over here. But a lot of people get a little nervous with a patrol car behind them. And so their, their first instinct is to basically come straight across like that really fast. Well, the problem with that is when you do something like that, you have other cars that are coming along. And so if you come across like that, it's going to cause them to either swerve, run into you, slam their brakes on, and then we would have another car hit that. So we really don't want that kind of thing to happen as well. So how do we want you to do that? Well, we know you're over there on the left, so we know it's going to take a little while. We'll activate our lights, turn your blinker on, and either continue on, slowing down a bit, or allow this traffic to come by and as they come by then you can come over and do that one lane at a time now sometimes what we'll also do with our patrol cars is we'll start to move over again because we do have our activated lights on there so people are going to start slowing down there which gives you the opportunity to move over there again do that one lane at a time and as you continue to do that then we would come over and stop in that right shoulder it allows us to get space for both of us so we're not right there with traffic. And also, uh, we like to have it to where we don't have guardrails or anything like that, so it allows us to do a passenger side approach so we're not on that side of traffic. So that's another way. So now we have a off-ramp coming up here. Should you take the off-ramp or can you stay on the interstate? You can do either, either of those. So if you're coming over like this and we have the patrol car behind you if you want to be safe like really safe it's it's a lot better to come off the off-ramp here usually you have a little shoulder here and we can come in behind you and the reason I say that is because we have highway speeds here anywhere from 55 to 75 miles an hour when they're coming through but when you have a patrol uh, a car coming down this way they're slowing down because they're exiting and there's usually a curve up there a turn or a stop sign that is going to make them slow down even more so this is a good spot to have a really safe space at. But anyways, those are a few safety ways of, uh, of pulling over and doing it safely. And we hope you, uh, you got something out of this. Please feel free to let us know if you have any suggestions, if you have any feedback, we do listen to it. And we want to continue to uh, improve and talk about what you want to hear because that's important to us too. We don't want to just sit yeah. here and ramble. We do ramble. This is just our nature. Yes. Um, but hopefully you actually get something out of it. So if there are things that you want to continue to learn, please let us know. Yeah, we also, uh, we're going to hit the next one here. I mean, we've actually doubled our, our podcast here, so we're up to two now. Two. So I'm excited. We're going to go for three. And uh, the next one, we're going to do something a little lighter. Um, I, I spent the day at our uh, our 
shop facility, mm -hmm. and we were putting together uh, one of our pickup trucks for the hazmat and also one of our chargers. Uh, and what they're doing is they did all the decals. So you get to see from how we get the vehicle in the shop and how, how quickly, I mean, it was amazing to see how, how nice a job these guys did and how quick they did it and just see the difference. So uh, we'll, we'll hit that and take a look at yeah, it. Yeah, and make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube as well because we are gonna, we continue to try and produce new videos. Again, as we have time, um, we have a lot of things going on, but if we can continue to produce things, we wanna get, uh, show some of our fleet off. We wanna show a few things. So if you're notified of our videos coming out on YouTube, then you're gonna be actually in the know and see those when we talk about them. Yeah, we, we sound like we're PBS here going you know please pledge but you know it's we do want to have those i, I told we them, don't I get said, anything out of it so no yeah, we don't but you can pledge so, to watch yeah that's pledge to it. watch yeah. just get us on the followership because yeah. i want one of those uh youtube not gonna happen awards not you know, gonna happen it, it's we're i'm sorry but up. no it's not gonna happen tell your friends have them tell two friends and so on and so on and yeah, we'll get there right yeah within i don't know 20 years we'll have a that's million right. subscribers <laughs> that want to watch Gary and Blake. Uh, before I on. retire, that's all I ask for you people. You know, just just help me out there. So, Okay, uh, anyway, all right. Well, we appreciate it. Uh, we look forward to next month. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, hopefully you learned something today. Yeah, safe travels.